you very much there, Sarah. Loads happening as ever. And now we're in Goldbrick House and uh, time to chat to you. I nearly called you Becky. <laughs> <laughs> That's Rebecca. Rebecca. Well, it's okay, it's Rebecca, isn't it? It's, it? Yeah, it's exactly the same thing, really, yes. isn't it? That's why I, I actually use an alter ego that's so similar to my real name. Yeah. So my real name is Becky Walsh, but my alter ego name is Rebecca Stone. So you'll remember Becky perhaps from earlier in the show last year when Becky was running around doing her life hacks. Indeed, Becky's life hacks. Yeah. I got spotted in the street, so I'm like, Becky's life hacks. <laughs> oh my God, that's me. So my life problems. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, And yeah. you gave them a copy of yours. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been good. Yeah, good one. So why did you uh, choose a nom de plume then? Is, I mean, you know, the obvious reason. Because it's adult content? It is adult content, but also as well because of branding. So most people know me from self-help books, uh, books like you do know learning to act on intuition instantly, which is all about self-development and learning who you are. So... You know, if they decided, oh, another one by Becky Walsh, oh, I like her books, and oh, that's a little shocking. So I decided, really, the sense of branding yeah. is to keep it, the two things, pretty darn separate. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good idea, because it's sort of, it's being fair to your existing sort of brand, and you can introduce it to them, can't you? It's like, what, what do you say, you're a friend of yours is uh, got yes. a new book out. <laughs> it's usually a friend of mine, unless I find out that they're actually really kind of, okay with the idea of erotic fiction yeah but you know it's amazing how many people and, and you know and as much as you like it or hate it i do have to thank 50 shades of grey for putting the that kind of work out into the world yeah. in, in one way so did you did you plan the release then of the book sort of for around this time because obviously it's it's more in the mainstream isn't it people talking erotic fiction yeah uh, so i deliberately planned it to coincide with valentine's day to coincide with 50 shades of grey but it was actually 50 shades of grey and my annoyance at 50 shades of grey that actually made me write cupcakes and coffee mm. simply because i had written a book that was all about self-development believing in yourself that room and my ideal readership yeah we're reading 50 shades of grey yeah yeah so let's talk about that because it's movie monday so it you is know, at the moment. Now, I personally have, have boycotted going to see Fifty Shades of Grey because I don't really agree with the messaging in terms of a healthy dynamic in a relationship. I'm fine with the, you know, sexual side of it, if that's what they want to do, each to their own, but it's more the, yeah. the power that he throws over her as a woman. Yeah. Um, and that's why I wanted to write this, because in a sense, it's sort of like an antidote to that, yeah. because, because I wanted to create a book that was for the thinking woman, where a woman's going on a journey where she actually finds self-love rather than has self-love depleted by a relationship yeah. that is kind of like not treating her in the best way possible. Yes. So she really, in a sense, has a feminine vulnerability. Sometimes it gets, you know, sad moments that happen to her, mm. but ultimately she has the power dynamic in this rather fruity little relationship that she gets into with a young man. Yes. She's just about to turn 40. He's just turning 21. Okay. So it's a bit of an age gap. Yeah. She Which again is another fun thing to, to put out there and to talk about. And absolutely. To, to debunk. Because generally it's okay if a guy does it, but uh, you know, young with a with a, a woman has a toy boy. No, the other way around. It's kind of people get jobs. Sugar daddy kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, and, you yeah. know, so I wanted to actually play around with some roles and some of those ideas. So although Fifty Shades of Grey kind of like plays around with roles, it's kind of, you know, it's sort of me. Yeah. Because the, the, the girl in it is not really in a powerful kind of position. Yeah. She's not at all. So, <laughs> so would you say that she has like a healthy relationship dynamic? Um, for the lead character in, in Cupcakes and Coffee, Sam, yeah. not really, but it's very, very modern. Yeah. Because the, yeah, what I'd say, because I've read, I've read half of it, so no spoilers, please. please. Yeah. Um, and of course, no spoilers for our viewers yeah. either. Is that she kind of knows that she can be a bit dysfunctional sometimes, but she's she's doing something about it. She's got this self awareness, and yeah. then she she sort of yeah, and so it doesn't take herself too seriously. It I think it's very it. funny. It is very funny, and people have sort of said it's a little bit like Bridget Jones and its sense of humour. It is really quite funny. Yeah, so. can I read the thing? I love this thing that that Jamie Lee Gray said on the front. If Fifty Shades of Grey met Bridget Jones and had an eat, pray, love child. <laughs> It would be this book. It's definitely kind of like crossing over some genres there. Yeah. Like how many best selling genres can we kind of like cross yeah. over in one book? Yeah. And you know, I think that this is the thing. I think that it really speaks to what it is to be a woman of our time, off the back of women's liberation movement, where women are now trying to do the, in a sense, the, the work of our fathers with all of the responsibility of our mothers. So women are kind of like maybe looking for something a little different, which is why I thought, you know, 
On the back of Fifty Shades, I actually really want to create something that takes it that stage further, that says, you know, it's okay to have kind of like an erotic side of things, but have a message, have a story, have something about it that is yeah. deep and meaningful for the thinking woman. Yes. Yeah. So that was my plan. So you've had two launches here, haven't you, in Bristol, mm -hmm. um, and one in London as well. But just before we talk about the launches, just quickly then, let's have a synopsis. For, for our viewers. So um, you mentioned that it involves a 40 year old lady yep. with a 21 year old guy yep. based in America. Do you want to just tell us a little sort of yep. summary of the book? So Sam reaches a point, she has a house in London, she reaches a point where she sort of like goes, this isn't the way that I want my life to be. Sells up the house, takes her dog, moves to San Francisco, embarks on this unlikely romance, and she's trying to launch a book on, um, on kind of like relationships, mm. which is just crazy because she's completely single and has a disastrous love life. <laughs> and she really hasn't missed the irony of that. Um, then she decides, right, enough for San Francisco due to lots of various things happening, and moves to Bristol. And the best bit about it being set in Bristol is there's lots and lots of places that you'll recognise. For example, the Hyde Bar, the Rockers, and that, uh, what was at the time called the Reflex, and it's now called Pop something or another. So it's got some really, really good That's local good. landmarks and things like Clifton and things that you'll recognise. See, I didn't know that because she's still in America. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. I don't mind that kind of spoiler because it's all about Bristol. Yeah. We're all about Bristol. And it is all about Bristol, and also why she makes the decision and the parallels between Bristol and San Francisco, which people might find quite interesting. Ah. There's lots of parallels despite suspension bridges. That's not the only parallel. Yeah. How fantastic! Great. Well, um, let's talk about the launch then, because you had you had a really successful launch at Boston Tea Party. Oh, you? I was absolutely amazed, and just anyone who's watching who came along, I'm so so grateful. We had two fantastic drag queens, so uh, we wanted to turn Boston Tea Party into San Francisco. Oh, really? okay, it's a coffee party, oh, so cool. I was just messing around with the name a bit. Yeah. Um, and so we turned the place into a San Francisco themed event. Um, we had Ella Julian singing; she was awesome. She was absolutely amazing. To Get a chance to see her sing, she's so cool. I've heard of her. Yeah, she's a Bristol based really singer. Bristol -based singer. Yeah. 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 So we had two drag queens, Bristol based Hello, singer. Hello, we want you on the show. Yes. Hear me now. And uh, <laughs> be heard. Um, and also, Heartfelt, who you've been to Heartfelt and yes. you had to make over. Yes, I did. Well, not looking very vintage today, but no, they're lovely. Heartfelt. They made over the guys this time. I did they? And we had two guys who were really happy to be made up as women. I mean, we're talking full wigs, oh, really? clothing, <laughs> makeup. They look quite stunning. Amazing. They were very, very attractive. And then you, you had your evening at Foiled as well. I did. And again, we had like lots of people who are um, authors, one of the authors coming along to that. So we had a really, really big turnout for us, for us as well. Yeah. If you ever want to go to any events, if you're an author, Foils is the place to go. That's really good. nice. Yeah, place. I talked to you all day because I mean, being you know, a successful author is. is I'd say a rare thing. Many people write books, or well, many people dream of writing a book and don't do it, and then some do, and then it's not successful. And you've got a good few books under your wing now. So I took a really unusual path because I am a published author, but this book is self published, and it's self published with Silverwood, who are based in Bristol. Really great self publishing house as well. That's good. Really good. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it's had such a successful launch, and there are some fantastic reviews on Amazon. Check them out. Um, and um, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for inviting oh, me. It's been fantastic. And uh, yeah, of course, we'll put up the information of where you can get your coffee or some coffee. Okay. Um, right, well that's it for part one of the show. Join us in part two when we'll be heading over to 20th Century Flicks for Movie Mondays. Stay tuned.